As I said, we are live and exclusive on City TV. Benjamin Nketia is my uh, guy for today. What's happening? Good evening. <laughs> It's only, it's only three. No, good evening. <laughs> anyway, I think that starts us off brilliantly with what is trending. Yep. And what is trending is Una Emery's very infamous good evening greeting, which we will not be hearing anytime soon. Uh... Because he doesn't have a job. He's jobless. He was fired by Arsenal later, or not later, earlier today, at around 10 a.m. And he's jobless. After a run of not winning in seven games, the board had decided it was enough to pull the plugs on Una Emery, 18 months after he was giving the keys to the Emirates and the mandate to fix Arsenal, get it back to the top level. He couldn't do the job and now he is unemployed. Ben, that is... No, I won't say it's a shocker, yeah. but did you expect the decision to, to be taken this quickly or you thought he was going to have a few more weeks and after that, you know, the die would be cast? Um, I didn't have an opinion either way on when the die would be cast, but if you look at the recent run of bad results, it just cast the situation into the right context. And talking about context, that was Una Emery's uh, initial days at the, uh, at the Emirates, rather, looking around, being shown around his new working environment, the place he was supposed to put together mm -hmm. and move the team on to bigger things, shaking hands with players. But Seems clearly, like only yesterday. Yeah, clearly yeah. this hasn't happened then. Enjoying a cup of cappuccino. <laughs> I'm sure he hoped he, or he had such calm times. So, like I was saying, look, um, Arsenal, I'm sure the hierarchy would have preferred that this would have been a little more salvageable to the point where they could ride this out till the end of the season and then re-evaluate their options properly. But look, seven matches without a win and experiencing your worst run of form since George Graham was in charge. I mean, come on. That's, that's unacceptable. Especially based on what Arsenal fans endured before um, Arsene Wenger's exit. This was supposed to be the rebirth. This was supposed to be the new chapter. And I always say this, that I don't think that Arsenal fans were expecting fireworks or expecting extraordinary results from Unai Emery. No, they weren't. They wanted... A manager who looked like he had a vision and a strategy for the long term. And ironically, in the first two or so games, he looked like he was going to be that guy. He looked like some sort of disciplinarian who was putting his um, rule on the team. Um, talk about making his own training regime rules and stuff like that. So in the beginning, we thought we were being treated to um, one of those managers who perhaps was going to be in Arsenal or in the hot seat for the long term. But it looks as if with this decision, Arsenal have joined the revolving doors club. So um, <laughs> I, I, I must say that Una Emery, in practice, walked himself into this situation. Well, I was just about to ask yeah. you, how did he get himself here? How did he go from a manager who seemed to have an idea yeah. to a manager who looked very bereft, very adrift, didn't understand anything, and was only preparing for the inevitable, which was his firing? You see, the first thing I think you should do as a manager is try as much as possible to make peace with everybody, especially the star players of a club. Now, he got off to the wrong footing by deciding that he didn't need Mesut Ezo in this club. And I wrote an article a while back for City Newsroom Online where I said that between Emery and Ezo, there was only going to be one king. And now it looks like Ezo is the king. <laughs> that's, that's the honest truth. I mean, look, that situation was one of the first wrong foots he started on. And then in the beginning, he began by playing this high-pressure football. I want my three defensive midfielders in the center of the park pushing the pace, trying to force opponents into errors. All of a sudden, after one or two bad results, he veered completely from that strategy and then started to manage games on a strategy by strategy base, like he started managing like, matches on yeah, game, game by game, game strategy, game by and, game and that didn't make any sense. For instance, we went from being a team that expected to press and then counter opponents to a team that now went into games not really having a game plan but having to plan around opponents. And the truth of the matter is that big clubs have identities, especially a club like Arsenal. I was telling a couple of friends last weekend that look, of all the teams whose identity you could wreck, Arsenal should be the last because... You feel that they, you can't understand no, what they want no, to do. No, because even in the mm. final days of Wenger, when the football was not producing results, when 
the fans were disgruntled, they were restless and just wanted him to leave. At least Arsenal could put together five, six passes. At least, I remember that Aaron Ramsey goal from um, Arsene Wenger's last spell before he left. As, at least Arsenal could put together a good run, a good some eye-catching football. And like I said, if any team does not have an identity in Europe or in England, it shouldn't be Arsenal. Emery has thrown that out. Okay. Coupled that with the fact that he was just tossing out club legends by the jokes. <laughs> like I said, you had frozen out Ezel. This uh -huh. was obviously going to have an effect on the players. And then he tossed out Aaron Ramsey. That really, really Oh, I, I mean, me. to be fair, I mean, he, he said he wanted Ramsey to stay. No, you see, I always I mean, say... And viewers, this, mm -hmm. this is one of the last results of yep. Una Emery. A one-all draw with Wolves at the, at the Emirates. And if, um, at this point, things had turned almost toxic, really. Yep. Uh, this was, again, another of, of those results. Arsenal yep. losing <coughs> at Leicester in a performance that nobody seemed to understand mm -hmm. what exactly they were trying to exactly. do. In that game. And then there was the infamous one with Palace that saw Granit Xhaka getting booed yep. by the fans. So, um, Ben, you're making a point about... Okay, so he's mentioned that a lack yep. of a pure philosophy... Yep, head him one. Head, uh -huh. Got off to a wrong foot by bad starting a bad relationship with the club's legends. Aaron Ramsey. I mean, Nathan, think about it. Aaron Ramsey seems out of sorts for me now playing for Juventus. It doesn't make any sense. This is one of Arsenal's hardest working players... He's one of Arsenal's most creative players. Again, he's one of Arsenal's most influential big game players. How on earth do you replace a guy like that? So from the get-go, you just got the sense that Mr. Emery was doing something wrong. And this, his insistence on um, his game-by-game -game management was not sitting well with the players. And then again came the test of leadership with the Granite Shaka issue. Okay. Very poorly handled. You're, I mean, he stripped the gentleman off the armband. I don't, I don't think that was the right way to go about that situation. You have a player who is your captain, who has had a standoff with fans of the club. You do not go on to strip him off his captaincy. Now, you know what Granit Xhaka said in the, po the post-events of that incident? He said that he was going to fight because he thought that that situation was an injustice. When you, when you have a situation like that, clearly <laughs> you have lost your dressing room when you have taken you, somebody's you, captain band and they are telling you that, you know what, I don't think this was a wise decision to take my captaincy for me. Maybe the team could have fined me for whatever fouls I said to the team, but to decide to take my captain ban away from me, and apparently I've not had like, what, four or five, five captains? Five captains, yeah. Who does that? This is clearly <laughs> evidence of somebody who has no leadership metal. To be very honest, wow. Unai Emery, I, I don't know. Look, I think that Arsenal would have fired him earlier, but he came in with the resume of having a French League A title, mm -hmm. and, three and, and three Europa League titles with Sevilla. Yeah. That definitely bought him a lot of time. That should count for something. Well, it should, but then again, we forgot, we all forgot that winning three Europa Leagues is not like winning a Premier League title. Neither is winning a League A title because PSG are like three light years ahead of everybody else in the French League A. Not the same for Arsenal. But for me, again, like I say, the most telling thing is his lack of vision and his lack of a strategy on where he wanted to take this team. You couldn't even play your best 11 ever as Arsenal boss. That was always a problem yeah. for me. How difficult is this? It seems to didn't play even a... find his best 11. Exactly my point. I mean, 18 months into a job, you can't, you can't find your best 11. I don't think Arsenal fans ever enjoyed a spell where they actually saw Obama Young, Lacazette, Pepe, and Mesut Ezo in a game together. I mean, forget about all what you think about being robust in defense, being blah, blah, blah. Arsenal were still conceding goals by the droves anyway. So put your best foot forward. He never did that for the team. And it just became a very restless atmosphere around the Emirates. I saw that game against Eintracht Frankfurt yesterday, and it was absolutely jaw-dropping. The Emirates was almost empty. Yeah. And that, that, for me, I think was the final straw for the Arsenal board that, you know what, during, during even Wenger's worst times, where they used to fly the plane, they used to fly the banners, it never got to the point where you would see such large patches in the crowd, especially on a European night. So for them, the only trajectory was downward, and they were just not going to go into the ditch with Emery. Well, Una Emery, losing his job there, uh, got, got fired 18 months after his appointment. Freddie Jumberg will be handling the team on an interim basis. According to a statement from the Arsenal uh, club or the board or the management they say they are already started a process of finding the next head coach 
the next head coach. That's what the statement said. Mm. Again, I'm drawing similarities is, yeah. between this one and the Spurs appointment of Jose Mourinho. So it looks like clubs are looking at this head coach yeah. slash manager. I mean, they want of, to make that differentiation. Think head about coach. Think, of, think about it this way, right? When you're a manager, you come in with your backroom staff. So seven, five, six people. The the the, rare, the former guard need to clear out for you to come in. You you demand money. You link up with the sporting yeah. director, and then you bring in your own personnel. Now, they are thinking about it. So, 18 months, the Emery marriage has ended. Now, he's left us with some of his people. I'm sure a lot of them will, be, sure, re yes. will be resigning as, as the days go by. But he's bought us players that were supposed to fit into his philosophy. So, they are thinking, wait a minute. This can't be a sustainable model until we are back in the days of Arsene Wenger and Alex Ferguson, where we know that there's some security and there's some longevity. Now, imagine that the next manager that comes in is a complete opposite of Unai Emery yeah. and says that, wait, who's this TNA guy? I don't want him. Who's this Pepe guy? I don't want him. Who's this guy? I don't want him. So it creates a problem for you in the long run. So what I'm thinking, one, with what Spurs have done and with what Arsenal are doing, is that they are moving away from the point where they are seeing individuals as long-term Okay, they, in, 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 in their mind, to, they don't see people short, lasting for to, too long. To yeah. short-term plans now. Now, they will do you what, three years, try and evaluate if it's working. If it's not working, they give you the boot. So they don't want to be stuck with a situation where the marriage is toxic and then all of a sudden they are forced to stay in it. So um, I, I, I guess for a lot of big-name established managers, maybe, maybe there's just some um, seal of authority and seal of power behind the contract that we are not seeing. Okay. But on face value, this whole head coach instead of manager business, that looks like what is being done for me. All right. We'll see where Arsenal uh, go from here. So like I said, Freddie Jumberg will be handling the team in the interim. He's the under-23 coach. We'll discuss more of that. We'll talk about Arsenal a little later in the